When I got home from work, my sister-in-law was once again squatting at our place. After her divorce, she came back to her parents' home and seemed to want to live with us permanently. He said he bought the house. My husband and I have been escalating our arguments over the issue with my sister-in-law. In front of her, my husband declared as if he was boasting, I bought this house. It's my right to decide who lives here. This house was inherited from my father. I was dumbfounded and at a loss for words at the sight of my sister-in-law smirking triumphantly. Furthermore, my husband has even brought his parents into this, making me out to be the villain. I can't stay silent in this situation. I'll corner them all, including my sister-in-law. My name is Jane Muller. I am 35 years old and work for an ID company. I have been married to David for four years. My mother passed away 10 years ago, and my father five years ago. My father always said, this house is a precious place filled with family memories. After I'm gone, I want Jane to use it freely with her spouse. To that, I responded, don't say such ominous things. I'd rather we all live here together. Ha <laughs> ha, that's true. I'd be even happier with grandchildren. Yeah, that's a story for the future. Without you around, I can't even show your grandchildren's faces. Ha <laughs> ha, exactly. So, I have to stay healthy for at least another 20 years. Right? That's the spirit. My father was always the picture of health. However, I never dreamed he would leave this world so soon, stricken by cancer. The hardest part was that he never told me about his condition until it was too late to do anything, when he finally said, actually, I'm in the hospital. I deeply regretted not doubting my belief that my father could never fall ill. After my father's funeral, my then fiancé David said, I'll support you, so don't worry. I'll always be by your side, Jane. David, both my parents are gone now. That's why I'm here. I'll definitely protect you, Jane. I'll be by your side with all my might. Thank you, David. Having you by my side really saves me. I feel the same. Let's be happy together from now on. It was his support that allowed me to face forward without despair, even after my father's death. Because of David, I can now lead a happy life. Later, we got married and inherited the house from my late father, starting a new life in this house. Soon after realizing his illness, my father had the house renovated. As a result, our home was reborn into a space as comfortable as if it were brand new. A few months after moving in, we were blessed with our daughter, Mary, and about a year later, she was born. Now, Mary is two years old, enjoying her first rebellious phase to the fullest. Still, the days spent with my family in this house are irreplaceable. One day, after working late, I returned home to hear cheerful voices leaking from the living room. It was clear that my husband was talking to someone other than our daughter. As I stepped into the living room and quietly opened the door, there was my sister-in-law, Alyssa. Alyssa, why are you here? Ah, uh, Jane, long time no see. Long time no see. What about your husband? And your daughter? Actually, I got divorced. I just told my brother about it. You got divorced? Yes, my ex-husband has custody of our daughter. So, I had nowhere to go. I see. That stuff. I couldn't hide my inner turmoil upon hearing Alyssa's confession about her divorce. However, I managed to maintain my composure and show a smile. That night, as I began preparing dinner, David and Alyssa were so engrossed in their conversation that they didn't offer to help. Even if they didn't help me, I couldn't forgive them for neglecting our daughter, Mary, who was absorbed in playing with blocks alone. It was hard for me to see her like that, so I gave David a stern look. David, could you please look after Mary for a bit? Ha, huh, she's playing right now, so it's fine, isn't it? That's not the point. Mary looks lonely. Just stay with her until dinner is ready. Eh, uh, but I'm catching up with Alyssa after a long time. You can talk while playing with Mary, can't you? Alright, alright. I'll watch her, okay. 
David clearly looked annoyed and even clicked his tongue. Alyssa, who was watching this, laughed and said, Pooh, a brother, scared of his wife. The interaction between my disgruntled husband and his sister trying to suit him only added to my irritation. Why does it have to be like this? For me, already tired, this was the last thing I needed. Taking care of children is a parent's responsibility. While I understand being happy about reuniting with his sister, there's no need for David to be so cold towards our daughter. Additionally, I'm disappointed in David's attitude, saying he'll watch her but actually ignoring Mary to talk with Alyssa. Mary, feeling particularly lonely, wouldn't leave my side while I was cooking. Because of David and Alyssa loudly drinking together, Mary couldn't fall asleep until late at night. After Alyssa left, David started drinking alone again. At that moment, I unleashed my day's frustrations on him. David, what was with your behavior today? Huh? What's up all of a sudden? I'm just having a good time drinking. You've been drinking all day. Your noise made Mary go to bed late, you know? Yeah, yeah, my bad. Happy if I apologize? What's with the attitude? Not even cleaning up after drinking, just pushing your own convenience. I'm sick of this. I earned the money, so don't complain. At that moment, David threw the beer can he was holding towards me. The contents scattered over my head and dripped onto the floor. We've had arguments before, but it had never gone that far. I was frozen on the spot by his sudden action. That night, we went to sleep without exchanging a single word. The next morning, he was still in a bad mood. I couldn't leave things as they were, considering our child. I wanted to repair our relationship quickly. Such thoughts crossed my mind on my way home from work. However, the moment I stepped into the house, any thoughts of reconciliation vanished. Incredibly, Alyssa was at our house again. As usual, Mary was left alone, looking bored watching TV. Seeing this, I couldn't help but raise my voice. David, what is this? Why are you neglecting Mary again? Tit? Not this again. It's fine, she's not crying. That's not the point. More importantly, there's something I want to discuss. Something you want to discuss. Interrupting me, David dramatically coughed and then exchanged glances with Alyssa before starting to speak again. Starting next month, Alyssa will be living here. Can you give up your room for her? Huh? Wait, what are you saying? Alyssa's apartment lease is up at the end of this month. She's divorced and single now, and she was a housewife with no income. That's pitiful, isn't it? I can't just agree to something so sudden. And why do I have to give up my room? If it's really necessary, why not give up your room? I'm using my room. You and Mary can sleep together, right? What? I was so shocked by my husband's unreasonable demands that I couldn't say anything. As I remained silent, David continued without paying any mind. Alyssa is struggling with money right now. As her brother, I want to take care of her in this house until she stabilizes. Can you understand that? But still, why do I have to give up my room? Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Can't you give up a room for your sister-in-law? That's so selfish. You're not considering me or Mary's feelings at all. Either way, it's already decided. If you oppose any further, I'll kick you out of this house. Kick me out. I bought this house. It's my right to decide who lives here. He said he bought the house. This house was inherited from my father. It's not up to my husband to decide who lives in the house, but me, the owner. I spoke quietly, trying not to scare my daughter while holding back my anger. Don't say things like that. This house was inherited from my father. Haha, <laughs> that doesn't matter. This is my house that I bought. I decide who lives here. What are you talking about? Are you really okay with this? Being kicked out will have a big impact on our relationship, you know? Next to my smug husband, 
my sister-in-law was also smirking and pleasantly. It seemed she truly believed my husband's claim that said, this is my house and intended to stay here for good. Normally, our bedroom was a space for my husband and me to share, but that night, my sister-in-law took over the bed. Unable to bring myself to sleep in the same room as my husband, I reluctantly slept on my daughter's small blanket, with my body hanging off. When I woke up the next morning, I heard noises of things being moved in the hallway. It was my husband and sister-in-law moving my belongings out of my room without permission. When I confronted them, my anger was beyond control. Hey, what are you doing with my stuff without asking? Oh, you're awake? Good, help us out. Stop it. Don't move my things without permission. Don't you understand your position yet? You can stay here because of me. Stop complaining and help us. My parents are coming soon. What? Saying that, my husband whispered quietly in my ear, Don't bring our domestic issues outside. If this turns into a big problem, I'll seriously consider a divorce. Right after those words, the doorbell rang. Waiting at the entrance were my in-laws. I didn't have a deep bond with my in-laws but had maintained a proper relationship. Despite that, they were looking at me very sternly now. We're coming in. We heard you've been causing trouble for David. Right? This is the house David bought, isn't it? Wait a minute, please. I hurriedly stood in front of my in-laws. Father, mother, what are you talking about? I've had enough. Why won't you help when the family is in trouble? Exactly. It's David's house since he bought it. It's up to David whether Alyssa lives here or not. And yet you... Apparently, my husband also lied to his parents, claiming he bought the house, and they believed it. Seeing me overwhelmed, my husband and sister-in-law wore smug, unsettling smiles. Then, after gathering everyone in the living room, my husband pressed me for a decision. Have you made up your mind? Will you let Alyssa live here, or will you and Mary leave? The choice is yours. Are you really serious about this? I asked, and he answered with conviction. Of course. This is my house. Oh, and by the way, would you consider my parents moving in here too? I couldn't hide my surprise at his statement and let out, what? The family home is getting old, so how about we use Mary's room for my parents? That way, the whole family can live together again. Alyssa and my in-laws voiced their bright agreement to this proposal. At that moment, anger boiled within me. They were serious, even planning to take Mary's room. He says, I bought the house. What a ridiculous notion. Deciding it was time to act, I took a deep breath and calmly began to explain to my in-laws. Alyssa, father, mother, it seems there's been a big misunderstanding. This house was actually inherited by me from my father. My in-laws looked surprised at my statement, but Alyssa, who had believed my husband's lies, glared at me angrily. Then, my husband retorted, What are you talking about? Do you want a divorce? Why do you keep up this falsehood? I understand wanting to save face in front of the family, but it's a nuisance to me. No joke. Then prove it. Prove it? Yes. Show evidence that this house is really yours. You can't, can you? There's no proof that you're the owner of this house. At his sneer, Alyssa chimed in, Go on, prove it. I stood up and opened a drawer containing documents. I pulled out a copy of the will I inherited from my father and a copy of the house's registry, spreading them out in front of my husband and his family. This is the proof. What? This is the will left to me by my father, and this is the registry for the house. The will makes it clear that the house belonged to my father. My husband, seeing the documents, was at a loss for words and visibly paled. He must not have expected me to have these documents. My father passed away before I married my husband. I received explanations about these documents independently from a lawyer. Yet, 
My husband still seemed intent on keeping up appearances in front of his family. Pointing at the documents I presented, he declared, they're fake. I responded calmly, if you doubt it, you can check the registry at the Registry of Deeds yourself. Then it will be clear that the house belongs to me. Even a fool like you should understand that. To the Registry of Deeds? Yes, you don't know about the Registry of Deeds? Well, it's no surprise since you've never bought a house yourself. What? He seemed lost for words, falling into silence. As my in-law's suspicious gazes turned towards my husband, I sternly told him, There's no misunderstanding this, right? The possibility of you being the owner of this house has been completely negated. You wanted to look good in front of the family, but you've only worsened your own position. All because you wanted to show off and lied. Calm down, Jane, let's talk. There's no need to talk. Continuing our marriage is impossible now. Leave immediately. Let's divorce, just as you wished. No, that's... My husband looked desperate and repeatedly tried to apologize. However, my resolve was firm, and I did not forgive him. My heart had completely cooled towards him, and the love I once had was gone. In this situation, my in-laws were furious, scolding my husband with shameful. In the end, my father-in-law brought the divorce papers, and they were signed by my husband on the spot. My in-laws, who handed me the divorce papers, apologized with a look of regret. Jane, we are truly sorry for how things turned out. I'm truly sorry for making you go through this. We had no idea our son was lying. It's okay. Having the divorce papers signed saved me the trouble. Afterward, my in-laws disowned my husband and left. My sister-in-law was outraged at my husband, and things eventually erupted into a fierce argument between them. When I threatened to call the police, they hastily left the house. I then submitted the divorce papers, and ultimately the divorce was officially finalized. My husband has since been living in a short-stay apartment close to his workplace. However, the troubles didn't end there. My sister-in-law caused a scene at his place of work. Not only the divorce, but her actions further deteriorated his standing. He is now isolated at work, with cold looks from those around him. How he will overcome this situation is something only time will tell. I continue to live peacefully in the house I inherited from my father with my daughter. Having more rooms available than before, our living situation feels somewhat more enriched. I had worried that Mary might feel lonely, but it seems she didn't have a very good impression of her father's behavior, so she hasn't been particularly sad and continues to live her days cheerfully. There's no chance of reconciling with David in the future. With my lovely daughter, I want to continue living happily in this house we inherited from my father. I've planned a trip to Cancun this time. Huh? A trip to Cancun? Hearing my mother-in-law say this with a smile, I harbored doubts. Despite being burdened with a huge debt and struggling to make monthly repayments. Why travel abroad? Moreover, despite the fact that I send money every month. Why is she going to Cancun alone? I absolutely cannot accept this. This is no joke. As I raised my voice in anger, my mother-in-law looked puzzled. Yes, this was all my husband's scheme. I was shocked by the certain truth revealed by my mother-in-law. My name is Amy. I am 35 years old, working as a regular employee at a general company, living an ordinary life. Five years have passed since I married Kevin. We had been living peaceful days without any major problems. However, suddenly a great trial appeared before us as a couple. This series of events was triggered by the recent death of my father-in-law. My father-in-law was a man of few words but gentle in nature, always caring for us as a couple. Thanks to him, I felt naturally integrated into my husband's family. That's why I couldn't accept his death. One evening, a little after his funeral, when things had calmed down, my husband suddenly started talking at dinner. Hey, Amy, it's weird to talk about this all of a sudden, but is something wrong? 
Actually, I've been thinking about starting to financially support my parents' house from next month. Support? Why would you do that? Since my father passed away, I think my mother is struggling on her own. Wait a minute. I quickly interrupted my husband. Your father's passing is sad, but your sister is living in your parents' house, right? Yes, that's right, but my husband has a sister living at home. She works for a prestigious company and earns much more than my husband. My father-in-law had also worked for a well-known company until his retirement. The retirement money should be with my mother-in-law. On the other hand, we, as a couple, work for small to medium-sized companies. Our income is probably lower than the average for our age group. In such a situation, I couldn't understand why we needed to send money to my mother-in-law. Kevin, I don't think your mother and sister are struggling with money. So why send money? When I asked this, an unbelievable answer came back. Actually, it seems rich on the surface, but my mom has a considerable amount of debt. What? My mother-in-law has such a huge debt. Yes, it's hard to believe, but it's true. But you know, for some reason, she hasn't told my sister about the debt at all. That's why I brought up this idea to somehow help her. But what about your father's retirement money? Actually, it seems that most of it went to his hospital bills, surgery costs, and funeral expenses. So now, my mom is really in a tough financial situation. That's a really difficult situation. Yes, it is. That's why I know I'm asking a lot, but I really want to help her. Seeing him bow his head deeply, I was torn. My mother-in-law had helped us, as a couple, many times before. While I was looking for my current job, she actively took over all the household chores in my stead and often came to cook dinner. Moreover, when my husband changed jobs and we were short of living expenses, she secretly gave him money. I was always full of gratitude for her kindness. And every time I thanked her, she returned with polite words of gratitude. Thanks to her support, we had overcome many difficulties. Now that she was in trouble, I couldn't just overlook it. Considering the favors we had received so far, I strongly felt the desire to help her. With those feelings, after a little hesitation, I eventually agreed to my husband's proposal. From that day, to support my mother-in-law financially, we became stricter about saving. We were not living luxuriously in the first place, but still, we simplified our meals even more and switched to cheaper items for daily use. My husband started working late every day and came home late at night more often. And then, an incident occurred during these days. Perhaps due to accumulated fatigue, I developed a fever and fell ill. When I was preparing to go to the hospital after calling in sick to work, my husband said, Wait a minute, are you really going to the hospital? Yes, I am. Just a fever, isn't it? There's no need to go to the hospital for a mild fever, especially when we need to save money. What? I was surprised by his words, but managed to argue back. But what if it's a viral fever like the flu? We have fever reducers at home, right? Just take those and rest. You'll get better. Going to the hospital is a waste of money. That's not true. Listen to me. No matter what, don't go to the hospital. We're saving money, remember? After hearing those words, I had no choice but to rest at home and ended up being bedridden for three days. Since then, my distress towards my husband gradually began to increase. Months later, to check on my mother-in-law's well-being, we visited my husband's parents' house. As I stepped into the living room, clothes and travel bags were scattered everywhere. Um, were you in the middle of sorting something out? I asked, and my mother-in-law replied with a beaming smile. Oh, actually, I'm going to Cancun this time. A trip to Cancun. Yes, that's right. Sarah said she would come with me. Amy, how about you? Do you want to come along? Really? As I was surprised, my sister-in-law, Sarah, next to me started clapping her hands with joy, saying, that's a great idea. Wait, what is this? We've been sending them money and they're happily planning a trip to Cancun. This can't be happening. Without noticing my speechlessness, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law continued to excitedly talk about the Cancun trip. I'm so excited. It's my first time in Cancun. 
My mother-in-law said, and Sarah replied, me too. And it's surprisingly affordable this time of year. Exactly, Amy. Don't worry. If you can come with us, we'll cover the travel expenses. My mother-in-law continued, really, we've been so grateful to you ever since Kevin got married. Added Sarah, unaware of my feelings, they were engrossed in their conversation. Finally reaching my limit, I confronted my smiling mother-in-law and sister-in-law, who were inviting me to the trip. Stop joking. A trip abroad. What are you really thinking? I raised my voice. What? Startled by my sudden reproach, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law froze with their mouths open. Even though they were shaken, they tried to calm me down. Amy, what's wrong? Did we say something odd? Maybe you don't like traveling? Did we invite you too forcefully? It's not about that. How can you even think of inviting me on a trip? Do you understand our situation? Amy, calm down. What caused you to be so angry? Really? If you have the means to go on a trip, I'd rather you pay off your debts first. What? Debts? I let all my feelings out towards them. We can hardly save money, and even when I'm sick, we can't afford to go to the hospital, yet we prioritize sending you money. And yet, how can you calmly plan a trip abroad? Please consider our situation a little. After pouring out all my emotions, I noticed tears streaming down my cheeks. Whether it was anger, sadness, or both, I wasn't sure. However, I was certain that the frugal lifestyle until now had been more painful than I thought. While crying, I collapsed on the spot. Seeing this, my husband rushed over in surprise. Hey, you. What are you saying to my mom? But, but, that's enough. We're going home. Kevin tried to pull me up forcefully. At that moment, my mother-in-law spoke up quietly. Wait a minute. What debts are you talking about? What? But didn't you have a huge debt? Surprised by my response, my mother-in-law's expression changed. There's no such thing. There's still my husband's pension and inheritance left. And I wouldn't be able to go on an overseas trip if I had debts. What? But? In that instant, I realized the full picture of the situation. Anger welled up inside me. The reason why my husband's income didn't increase despite his daily overtime. Why I was the only one getting thinner and sick, despite the strict savings. And why my usually polite mother-in-law never thanked us for the money we sent. Then, I faced a shocking truth. The need for sending money, as my husband had been saying, was actually a fabrication. There was never a need to send them money. I could have gone to the doctor immediately when I got sick. I would have realized it if I had thought about it a bit more. Realizing this made the pointlessness of our past frugal life evident. But in our financially tight life, it had been hard to make a calm judgment. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law on the scene seemed to realize the truth behind my husband's words. They looked at Kevin with a doubtful gaze. Kevin, what's the meaning of this? Amy says she was sending money because you had debts. What's all this about? Kevin was clearly looking for an excuse. No, it's different. Actually, how is it different? Explain it clearly. Make us understand, talk properly. Um, well, I could see that he was still trying to control the situation. My love for him had completely faded. I confronted my confused husband directly. What's all this about? There were no debts for your mother or sister. Where did all the money I gave you every month go? He began to mumble his words. Well, um, don't lie now. Tell me everything. Uh, the truth he revealed was something I found hard to accept. Actually, I was invited by a colleague and ended up going to nightclubs. You've been going to a nightclub? Yeah, well, how should I put it? I just got carried away without realizing it. I can't believe it. Going to such places when it hasn't been long since your father passed away. And that was around the time you started talking about sending money, right? I'm sorry, really sorry. I just went there for a bit of a change of pace. I didn't think it was a big deal. Such an excuse can't be accepted. How can you behave so irresponsibly? Lying about sending money and using my hard-earned money for going to nightclubs. I can never forgive that. No, it's not like that. I never meant to hurt you, Amy. I just got a bit carried away, that's all.
I really regret it. As I shouted, my husband tried to appease me, piling up lies. But trust once lost, even but when husband and wife, is not easily regained. His impromptu lies and insincere attitude completely extinguished my love for him. No matter how long his apologies continued, I couldn't forgive him in my heart. I couldn't bear it anymore. I felt it was impossible to continue living with someone who lied to satisfy his own desires. With despair welling up from the depths of my heart, I told my husband my final words. I'm fed up. Saying I didn't intend to hurt you is no joke at all. Not only did you deceive me with lies, but how much do you need to belittle me? While I had a fever, you forced me to save money and enjoyed yourself in nightclubs? Unbelievable. Sarah's voice of surprise echoed in the background as I continued indignantly. I've been saving hard for your dear mother. Food, daily necessities, clothing, I've been enduring it all. Do you understand that effort? I can't even think of you as a family anymore. Such a scumbag should just go to hell. Just wait. I only went to nightclubs. Just that? The drinks you enjoyed with the money saved while I was sick must have tasted great. No, it was for work. I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm leaving. Wait, Amy. Please, I need you. What? Now? Have as much fun as you want in the nightclubs and see how it feels. Don't say that. By the way, I want all the money I gave you as support back. Make sure you pay it all back. Realizing the situation, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law hurriedly showed a posture of apology. Amy, I'm really sorry. I can't believe my foolish son did such a thing. It's truly shameful. Because of my thoughtless brother, mother, Sarah, please don't apologize. It's not your fault. No, we have a responsibility too. We want to make amends somehow. Amy, I'm so sorry too. My brother has caused such trouble. Don't worry about it. But I've decided to divorce. I'm truly grateful to both of you, but please let me say goodbye. They nodded while shedding tears. Mother, Sarah, thank you for everything until now. At that moment, my husband called out to me with a pained voice. He knelt on the spot and continued to make excuses. Amy, please forgive me. I really regret what I've done until now. Before I could react, Sarah moved first and slapped my husband across the face. As he stood there stunned with a swollen cheek, Sarah looked down at him and said, I can't believe you would do something so terrible. How much more did you need to torment Amy? Sarah, lying to Amy to take the money meant for supporting the family, not allowing her to go to the hospital, and on top of that, spending that money at nightclubs. How can you be so heartless? I'm ashamed to be your sister. Wait, just hear me out. What's the point now? The fact that you've been forcing Amy to save and suffer for these past few months is true, isn't it? Mom and I will never forgive you. Never associate with us again. Do you understand? Don't ever show your face to us again. My sister-in-law, holding back tears, possibly dragged my husband out and threw him outside. She locked the door and cut off all communication with my husband. No matter how much he pleaded at the entrance, the door was not opened. Amy, I'm really sorry. There's not much I can say now, but forget about that man and find happiness. With those words, I was hugged tightly by my sister-in-law. After expressing my gratitude, I left my in-law's house. Then, I moved out of the house where I lived with my husband and found a new place near my workplace. Since I was already employed permanently, I didn't face much difficulty in living even after the divorce. I consulted a lawyer I knew to proceed with the divorce. It was clear that my husband was at fault, and the divorce was quickly finalized. I claimed the money he fraudulently took from me as support and the resulting compensation. I made sure to collect the maximum amount. He ended up having to pay the compensation in a lump sum and is now living days incomparably harder than before. I hear he is consumed with endless overtime and working through the night. Naturally, he no longer has time to frequent the nightclubs he used to enjoy. Now, he's just an existence who works. After the divorce, I received several messages from my ex-husband. I was wrong, forgive me. I'm not going to nightclubs anymore. 
I don't want to get back together. I'm just really in trouble. Can you lend me some money? Please, you're the only one I can rely on. In the end, it's all about money. I feel nothing but pity for him. Now that all the payments are finished, I'm thinking of blocking his contact. Meanwhile, I still keep in touch with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. They worry about me and have been in regular contact even after the divorce. Just the other day, seeing me having regained my spirits, my mother-in-law showed tears. Amy, I'm so happy to see you doing well. Mother, don't worry about me. I can live on my own strength. I always thought you'd be okay, Amy. But remember, you can always rely on me and Sarah if you need anything. Thank you so much. Let's go to Cancun together next time, just the three of us. Of course, I'm looking forward to it. If it weren't for the support of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, I couldn't have overcome the trial of divorce. Since they always wish for my happiness, I vow to live my life with all my strength.